So when I got the phone call from the council president uh, offering me the position of director general, I, I was in, in, in shock almost. I was very, very excited. Um, I felt the uh, um, challenge immediately. Uh, I was uh, very honored, but at the same time I realized that this was a very important challenge in my life. So this all happened in a split second and uh, after that I think that you know my, my most um, important feeling is that of excitement right now. I'm really looking forward to, to do this job. ESO is a, a rather unique organization in, in the astronomical world. We have truly amazing sites in, in Chile where we have our uh, telescopes. We have state-of-the-art facilities. We have a very talented and highly skilled personnel. We're an intergovernmental organization that uh, comes with an enormous responsibility because the governments and the parliaments of the member states have decided to support us and we need to comply with our duties and deliver the best possible program for the benefit of our member states. That helps a lot to us because it allows ESO to plan into the future. We know that we will have continued support from our member states. But as I say, at the same time, it also brings to us an enormous responsibility because we are in a central and leadership role in Europe with regard to astronomy. For the next decade, we need to concentrate on building and delivering the ELT, the Extremely Large Telescope, which will be the largest optical infrared telescope in the world, while we keep operational and updated the VLT and ALMA, which are our current workhorses and very much at the forefront of worldwide astronomical infrastructures. This is already a very big challenge for an organization like ours and I believe we should concentrate on those and I'm sure we will succeed in it. The objectives of astronomy are changing every day uh, because it's a very lively science and every day we make progress with our observations. So it's really very tough to predict what will be the hottest topics in a decade from now. As of today, uh, of course, we look forward to make significant progress in the discovery of uh, habitable planets outside the solar system, in understanding how stars form, how planets form, how galaxies evolve, what's the interplay between stars, dust, uh, gas, black holes, and of course, in understanding what is the uh, content of the universe, what's dark matter, what's dark energy. All those questions will surely not be solved in a decade from now. But I can bet that, you know, by then there will be many others that today we cannot even imagine and that will be very much on the table. ESO is really very well equipped to uh, meet those challenges of astronomy over the next decade. We have a very well uh, prepared battery of equipment uh, we have a huge variety of instruments in our telescopes. Uh, if, if we just take the VLT as an example, uh, we have four unit telescopes, each one equipped with three instruments every night. So that offers an, an immense uh, facility for our uh, astronomers and those of our member states. The ELT will be a revolutionary telescope because on the one hand it will have an enormous collecting area so it will be able to see very faint objects. But on the other hand, as it will be equipped with a technology that it's called adaptive optics, it will deliver the sharpest vision of the universe of any telescope of its class. I'm really very excited about ESO making big discoveries over the coming years in some of the research areas that today are in the hot seat. You know, this is about exoplanets, about uh, atmospheres, about finding uh, biotracers in those atmospheres. It's about star formation, it's about galaxy evolution. I think that uh, we all look forward to discoveries in those fields and this is really very exciting. ESO has some responsibility to convey to society what we do here, what is astronomy, what do we learn about the universe. And 
I regard the supernova project as a very important resource for that purpose. Actually, the supernova itself will be a major educational facility. The ESO Fellowship program has been enormously successful and of course my intent is to, to keep it. You can see around the world many astronomers in leadership positions who have been ESO Fellows before, so we're really proud of the program. Uh, of course, uh, when one thinks about, well, uh, we may be expanding it a little bit or, or whatever, uh, one needs to take into account the budgetary constraints. So, uh, we'll do what is best for the organization, but certainly this is one of the things that I would like to keep. ESOS telescopes and ALMA are very heavily subscribed. Uh, we, we have uh, proposals from uh, our astronomers which bid for time which exceeds by a factor of five or even ten in some uh, occasions the available time. This produces a lot of frustration in astronomers who uh, rightly believe that they have very good scientific proposals that cannot be executed. Uh, but uh, unfortunately we don't have the resources to clone our facilities and I would say that um, an oversubscription of a factor between three and five is probably normal across most of it, the international facilities. Even in the era of the extremely large telescopes like our ELT, I believe there is a role for the smaller size telescopes of the three to four meter class like the ones that we have in La Silla. I mean, the proof today is that those telescopes are, are producing amazing science uh, that can only be done with telescopes equipped with very precise instrumentation and operated in a very specific manner. Mm -hmm.